Hello everyone, Nithya Nandam. Welcome back. This week I really wanted to talk about social change. So in university, my major is actually called NGOs and Social Change. And what this means is basically non-governmental organizations, organizations that are like nonprofits, charities, outside of the government that aid in helping the world and creating social change. And so this is what I study. And what I've been thinking about lately, I actually had to write a paper about this, was what is social change and what makes social change sustainable? And I think these are such important questions that we need to find the answer to, especially at this point in time. I mean, the world that we're living in is is getting pretty chaotic in many, many ways. And the climate, the political climate in the U.S. is very heated right now. So social change to me, what I've found in the last couple years is that truly change does come from within. And I know that's such a cliche statement and we hear it a lot. And I used to hear it when I was younger and think, oh, of course, but I'm a nice person, simple enough. Um, just thinking that by being a kind overall person, then that's fine and that's gonna help change the world. <clears throat> I mean, and that is true to some extent, but I think it goes so much further than this. And what I found is that true lasting and the most impactful change always comes from within ourselves. And we can only really make change within ourselves and that's the honest truth. And so, Often we want to shine this light of introspection um, outwards. We want to just put our attention on the outside world, um, on, on crises happening around the planet, thinking, I just want to help them over there. I just want to help solve this problem. But we hate looking in at ourselves. So first of all, I think social change has to come from within. It, that change in our inner space is what really reflects lasting change in the outer world. So getting into this, how does social change become sustainable and what makes it sustainable in, in the most important ways? So first I want to define sustainability. For me, sustainability means something that is extremely long lasting and applies to the entire planet, the entire globe. Um, and I think there's different lenses you can look at sustainability. Um, and often we we come up with the short-sightedness and I think that's what causes often decisions to be made that harm other beings, harm other people because we aren't looking at the entire picture. We're always looking at some type of microcosm. So I think sustainability first, we have to look at a global scale and long-lasting time frame. That's what makes choices and social change sustainable to me. And I think the only way to do this effectively is through the space of Advaita or oneness. Advaita is a term um, that's from Hinduism from thousands and thousands of years ago in the Vedic culture that basically means we are all a part of one essential reality. That this collective consciousness almost, that everything that I do is, affects everything around me because everything around me is me. We are all integrated to one another and this interconnectedness of all life. And so from that space, we realize that every little decision we have has this butterfly effect. Um, I know that movie that in the US that came out a while back really fascinated people, including myself. And it's totally that same idea, right? Is like one little thing we decide changes the entire reality of the rest of the planet. And that's not an exaggeration. We even see in science how this happens. And so, from this knowing, from resting in that space, we can take responsibility for the whole. And I think this is so important, especially in the topic of sustainability when it comes to climate change and um, other environmental issues, and even social change issues, um, social equality and things, is that Swamiji beautifully says, we only don't take responsibility for things because we feel they're outside of us. There's some type of separation. When we feel something isn't ours, we don't take responsibility for it, right? When we do feel 
like something is ours, that's what we take responsibility over. It's like, oh, this is my house. I take responsibility over it. This is my car. I will take responsibility for my car. There's some disconnect there with this cognition that things aren't ours. And I think this is like the root of all problems that that are that humankind creates is that we we truly dissociate ourselves and this cognitive dissidence as they call it in psychology is responsible for destruction and chaos and violence happening in the world right now not only to people but to animals to plants to our entire ecosystem and i think that it's easy to to dwell in this duality, right? Because I think what pulls people to make decisions um, in separateness, in that space of individuality, is because there are some type of short-term or personal benefit to them, some personal gain, at least in the short-term that they see. But in all honesty, I think all this is is a short-sightedness. And even if we're looking at it from a selfish perspective, I think that when we make decisions in that space, it only does detriment us as well in the long in in the long run. Um, for example, here's a tangible tangible example. So the factory farming industry has revolutionized the way we have accessibility to food on a massive scale. It's extremely cheap. We could say it provides jobs. It provides cheap food to people that can afford it more, and it also is like giving us more access to meat at a at a faster rate. So for these economic and social benefits, maybe we could see that there are some positives to factory farming and consuming meat. But as soon as we magnify that and look at the large scope of it, we see that even, let's just look at the personal level, ignoring all the other issues I could be talking about with it, consuming red meat increases your risk of heart disease and stroke by up to 60%. And not only that, but the runoff from factory farms, the emissions from them, are literally polluting our own backyards. So if we were just looking at the detriments it would have to just ourselves, we see this choice I'm making makes no sense. Not only is it damaging my body, my, my system, and shortening my life, but that even my own home and backyard and air is getting destroyed because of this. So... When we, when we hold this strong space of connection, it also fosters uh, mindful and conscious interaction with the world around us. And true peace, true lasting love and peace comes from the space of oneness. And if it doesn't, it, it tends to be fleeting. When we think that we love something or, or think that we feel connected to something, but then come to find out, oh, I just took my anger out on it, or I just damaged it in some way, we see that whatever space we were holding wasn't in authenticity. And I think that when we, we get disillusioned to think that we can separate ourselves from things, and that's what causes us to make rash decisions, make detrimental decisions to our planet, to our bodies, um, to people around us. So, to wrap it up, sustainability established in the space of oneness, in this, this spiritual concept that, that we are one, that we are interconnected, and that my every thought, word, and decision affects the world around me, and everything in the world around me affects me. Why? Because I am it. So, it leads us to the space of nonviolence, is that I would never hurt another being, another person, or the earth, because I know in reality that, that that is me, just as much as this body is me, that my neighbor is, is, is me as well, that that tree is just as much me as this body, and I need to take care of it. It's, it's our, it is our responsibility. And I think as humans, we almost get this decision fatigue, we get super overwhelmed by these large scale issues world wars, climate change, deforestation, we're like, like, too much, too much, what do I do? And we want to like run away from this responsibility. There is so, so much we can do as individuals. And I 
know so many people that have this uh, this apathy because I think it really comes from just the space of being feeling overwhelmed and so I just want to say there is so much you can do on an individual level to create social change to foster sustainability in action and maybe just take some time to, th to dwell on this idea that this concept of oneness I would definitely encourage you to reach out and research it on your own and ponder on it because I think it's one of the most revolutionary ideas um, that is not new but it is so revolutionary especially to the conscious system that we're a part of right now and I think that when we hold this space of oneness every action we take can be made to be sustainable you just start to see things so clearly when we're constantly invoking this sense of responsibility and interconnectedness we just tend to make these decisions in such a higher context um, we just think of everyday things like oh I just heard that this like certain product actually damages the rainforest and contributes to deforestation I'm just gonna stop buying that or oh I found out this one brand of clothing actually has child workers in their factories it's just this conscious form of living and then we can take these seemingly small action steps but they just collectively build up and and create our lives to be so much more sustainable and so much more full of love and abundance and it just I can say also just internally when we do that work when we look in and look at look inside and say what in me is shying away from taking responsibility for the world around me what in me still holds violence that I'm reflecting in my outer world what are these things I can work on it all starts from inside and I think when we take the time every single day as much as we can to invoke this consciousness this mindfulness this interaction uh, we can create uh, an incredibly sustainable way of life and create long-lasting and global social change in so many beautiful ways thank you so much for listening um, please share your thoughts with me and I will get back to you guys as soon as I can thank you so much Nithyanandam